Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna go over my 10 tips to help you plan a more successful fishing trip. So if you like what you see, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and stay tuned. All right guys, my number one tip is gonna be check the weather. And when I say check the weather, I don't mean check it to see if it's sunny out, check it to see if it's raining out. We're all gonna get rained on. Or, you know, we can't plan every trip in the sun. Sure, that's great, but what I really mean is I'm talking about check the wind. You wanna know how fast the wind is blowing. You wanna know how fast sustained winds are, how fast it's gusting. Especially depending on where you're fishing, wind can play a huge factor. If you're fishing at the coast, if you're going out in the ocean, you absolutely need to know what the wind is doing. If you're going in the big rivers, even big lakes, I mean, the wind can kick it up. So watch your gusts, watch your wind, and really pay attention to the direction that wind is going. If you have strong winds, certain directions, it can make a big difference between a good day and a really bad day. So the app that I like to use, check out Windy. I'll put a link in the description below. And that app really has a lot of great things that you can see and do. Hey guys, my number two tip is check your bar reports. Now this only pertains to people who are heading out in the ocean, but it's super critical to make sure that you're looking and checking those bar reports. I really only use NOAA. Um, to check my reports and if you're going out of a major port that will offer those reports you know have a coast guard tower it's critical to check those a lot of times it's real easy to be down at the coast fishing in a bay think oh it looks pretty good let's just hop over the bar just please check those reports it can be a matter of life and death coastal bars are nothing to mess with i personally am going to a class this weekend to learn how to do to learn more tips on how to cross those bars safely and effectively. I highly recommend using any of those resources that we have here because we do have some of the most dangerous coastal bars in the world. So please be safe. All right, my number three tip is knowing the tide. Now this is really dependent on fisheries that are influenced by the tides, such as the Columbia River from Bonneville down, anything on the coast, in the ocean, uh, the bays. You really wanna know those tides when you're targeting fish that can typically react to those tides. For instance, you want to know when you're going to have a high tide, when you're going to have a high slack. A lot of times we can have our salmon bites happen on those tide changes. And so what we can do is schedule and kind of plan our trip around fishing specific areas and specific target areas for those salmon during those tide changes. It can make your trip a lot different. It can make your trip really well if you, if you take the time to know where and when to be. For instance, down at Garibaldi, I'll do something like, I'll, at the tide change, we'll fish those target areas by the bar. We'll fish those areas, the ghost hole, areas that there are salmon that are gonna be. And the other times of day, you can be out, head out for rockfish, head out for your crab. Now, of course, a bite can happen anytime, but Historically, we see those bites happen at those tide changes. So you just want to know where, when they're going to be and where to be. It can really improve your chances. So my number four tip is study maps of the fishery you're heading to target. So it's, this is especially critical to when you've never been somewhere before. You know, if you just roll out there, you start fishing an area, you start fishing a lake, you start fishing a bay, uh, and you don't really know where the structure is and what you're doing. You're just kind of looking at your GPS and looking at what, what people are doing out there. I mean, that works, but if you want to set yourself up for success, do some planning, do some pre-study. I use map, I use my, my regular, you know, good old paper maps where I'll look, I'll look for structure. I use my apps. I, I run Garmin, so I run my Active Captain Garmin app and I'll go and I'll chart out where I want to hit. If I'm sturgeon fishing, I'll go to the river, I'll chart out those, those deep holes where I wanna to go to, where I wanna hit. And then I'll transfer that data over to my, my GPS on the boat that'll help me kind of pre-plan. All right, we got this spot to hit, then we can hit this spot next. Those things can be really helpful. So just know your fishery, have at least some sort of idea of what you're going into. If it is an area like a bay, which has major tide swings. Make sure you know where those sandbars are. You don't want to get caught on a sandbar. Everybody knows down at Buoy 10, there's sandbars that always move. So just make sure you have a good idea of where those sandbars are, where, where the sands are, and how to avoid them. And studying maps is a really good way to increase yourself, increase your efficiency, and make sure you're not stuck on a sandbar and not fishing. All right, guys, 
My number five tip for making your trip more successful is talk to your local marina. Talk to the local bait shop. If you go down somewhere new, even if it's been a few months since you've been somewhere, go into the marina, go into the bait shop. Hey, shoot up a conversation with them. You know, buy your bait, buy whatever you need, buy a soda and ask them, hey, what have they been hitting on? Have you guys heard of any caught today or in the past couple days? If so, just ask questions, pick it, get those, get that information from anyone you can. And locals are the best source of knowledge when it comes to fisheries and how dynamic we all know how dynamic they change. So if you can talk to locals, if you can get that information from the bait shop, which typically they are going to be willing to help you because they want to sell you products. So just get that info, you know, don't sell yourself short. Don't just hop in the boat and shoot out there. If you go down to and you find out that they're biting in this hole and they've been hitting that all, you know, all week, you don't want to run out to your boat and try to haul out, you know, haul ass out there and go fish another area where they're not really been biting. So do the due diligence, ask those questions. It will help you in the long run. All right, guys, my number six tip is kind of tailing off of my number five tip, but this is talking about what gear is working down there. Some fisheries, most fisheries, they'll have a specific thing that they like, you know, whether that's an anchovy, whether that's herring for salmon, you know, a specific lure for trout, kokanee, whatever it may be. And knowing what those fish want at that time can really make a big difference. So for a good example, you could have somewhere like Southern Oregon, Odell Lake. They love corn down there. They love little wiggle hoochies. You know, if you're running something up in Wallowa for kokanee, Wallowa Lake, you know, they like maggots tipped instead of corn. So these are little things that you need to go ask. You need to do research. You need to see what's going on and it will make your trip more successful. You will catch more fish. So just try to find those little niches that are the fish are liking around in the different areas. And it will, it will make a big difference. You know, we have a fishery, our fishery down in Coos Bay, they like a spinner in front of their herring. They like a spinner in front of their anchovy, you know, know that stuff because it's very dynamic. Each area, they're very picky. And if you know what they want, they're going to bite. All right. My next tip for planning a proper fishing trip and successfully is getting information in advance, weeks in advance, days in advance, months in advance about what people are using down there and how they're using it. You know, is it, early early season springer fishing and they're using triangle flashers still they're running herring they're dredging the bottom of the columbia or is it warmer weather and they're using 360 flashers and spinners these are things you want to know before you go out and just kind of wing it you don't really want to wing it if you only have a certain amount of time on the water that day maximize it so know what they're wanting know what they're doing all right guys number eight this is kind of my no-brainer um, some of you might get mad about this, but it's what, it's what I do. Watch the guides. If you see all the guides fishing on that far side of the river and you're over here doing your thing and not really having success, maybe you should move over there where they're all at. I mean, these guys know what they're doing. They're really good at their job. They do it every day. Us average Joes, you know, we don't, we're not out there every day. We're not, we're not patterning these fish like the guides are. Especially there's a lot of and there's a lot of great guides out there that would love to help you out You know give you knowledge Maybe you know give you tips book a day book a fit book a trip with them Go out with them ask some questions. There's a lot of guys that want to really help So when you're out there watch the guides they are gonna be your key to knowing Being able to react and know where those fish are probably moving. They're like a network. They're on the phones. They're calling they're finding out who's biting, what's biting where, who's getting hit, who's got fish in the boat. So if you can follow and pattern them, it can really make a big difference. Now, I'm not trying to make anyone pissed about this, but it is a way to catch more fish. So if that's why you're here, follow these tips. All right, guys, my number nine tip is know when your sunrise is, know when your sunset is, and also know the distance it's gonna take you. Are you leaving from your house for a day trip? All right, if you're gonna do that, make sure that you know how far it's gonna take you to get there. If it's gonna take you two hours and sunrise is at six, you're gonna to wanna to be out the door at four or earlier, probably earlier, 3.30, because you wanna get in the water, you wanna be ready to fish. So do a little due diligence, just check how long it's gonna take you. You know, typically when we're leaving in the mornings, like, 
like that. There's not a lot of traffic, so you don't really have to worry about those traffic delays, but there could be construction delays. So check that, make sure that, you know, you're not gonna be late to that, that launch. And we all know sometimes when they have those one day openers, how busy and how crazy it can get. So if you're there earlier, if you're there on time, you're gonna get in the water and you're gonna be fishing faster. All right guys, my last tip, number 10, talk to your other fishermen. Exchange knowledge. When I'm down camping at the coast and I'm fishing day, you know, day after day, I'm over talking to the other guys fishing. I'm over talking to my other, you know, the other campsites saying, hey, we picked up three today, you know, we had six bites. This is the area we fished in. I'm, I'm letting them know what happened to me and how we fished that day in the hopes that they're gonna give me knowledge back. And I'm telling you, if you are nice and you give that knowledge out, you will get knowledge back. It's really valuable and it's a really good, gives you a broader idea of what's going on in the fishery that day or even that week. You know, there could be, hey, oh, we, you know, we went and fished three days out here, out in this, this bay, and it wasn't very good. So we went and we switched over to this bay. I mean, those, those tips can make it or break it for a trip, especially if you take vacation time, you go down to the coast to take vacation time, maximize it. Even at the ramp, you hear, talk to guys at the ramp. You see a guy with a cooler full of fish, find out, hey, I mean, what'd you use? Were you using herring? Were you using anchovy? How, you know, what were you using today? They might tell you to kick rocks and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to tell you, there's a lot of people out there like that, but you just never know. You're not going to know if you don't ask. I personally, I'll ask people, Hey, I, you know, Hey, I hooked him on herring today. We did pretty well. You know, what'd you, how'd you do? That's something good to ask, you know, and it doesn't hurt. It can help you get a little bit of knowledge just to help give you that edge when you're out there. All right, guys, so those are my 10 tips to help you plan for a more successful fishing trip. If you like what you see, please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe. I'm really trying to ramp this channel up. I need to get to a thousand subscribers to get this channel monetized where it can help me really spend more time to build these videos for you. I want to do all, all, all sorts of different things. If you guys have suggestions, please let me know. I want to, I'm here to help you. I want to help anyone that I can become a better fisherman because that's how I learned. I learned by getting on YouTube, reading, talking to people, going on guided trips, asking tons of questions. So please ask questions, tell me what you wanna see and tell me if I'm forgetting anything so we can make another video and get that info out there. I wanna promote this knowledge and help everyone out. See you next time.